Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to Super Fun Sunday. This is going to be awesome. So the artist that we're going to look at today is Paul Felix. Give me like five minutes to um, do some updates and uh, I can I can pin, uh, what do you call it, like a timestamp if you want to skip right to the art. But stick out stick it out for the, the intro. I think it'll be good. So anyway, um, I want to thank everyone for 15,000 subscribers here. Uh, um, you know, I wanted to definitely acknowledge it, but, uh, I kind of, when I thought about it, it's like, it's weird. Like I'll see people like on Instagram and they'll go like, ah, 30,000 subs or whatever it is. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Revel in your awesomeness. But, uh, I do think it's important to acknowledge that stuff for the people that support you. So I really honestly, thank you very much. And, uh, look, you know, let's move on. That's what we need to do. We need to just keep working and uh, growing and uh, enjoying art. <laughs> so uh, over the weekend, I actually took some courses, art courses for myself. I spoiled myself. Um, I've been teaching a lot the last year, which I never ever, I mean, if you watch any of my older videos, I was really, really hesitant to even ever refer to myself as any kind of educator because I'm self-taught. Um, you know, the st you could stereotype me as, Ah, uh, this guy's an inker and da 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 da. But ultimately, I got the nerve up, thanks to all of you, to actually sign up for Patreon. So I did that, basically on YouTube encouragement. People were like, "You got to start a Patreon." But you know, I went to Patreon to work, so it was challenging. Was well, what do I offer on Patreon? So I, I ultimately ended up uh, doing reviews and a lesson tier. The lesson tier was interesting because honestly. Uh, when I started doing it, even though I felt confident in my penciling and storytelling and things like that, I had enough experience where I felt like I could do it. Um, I was more nervous about those lessons than the inking ones. So, you know, I would say that it was maybe like if I did 10 lessons a month, um, seven or eight of them would be inking lessons and two or three would be penciling. And I did my best and I really tried to give people, if not... Uh, good advice, uh, some good examples of what they can do. And I've got a pretty good eye for storytelling and the um, psychology uh, uh, of it, the graphicness of it. I mean, I, I think I've got a real good handle on it. But anyway, so um, over the year of doing all those reviews and lessons, I mean, I've done several hundred now. Um, I've learned so much. It's been absolutely astounding so one, I just want to thank Patreon in general, but two, obviously I want to thank anyone that's ever gotten a review or lesson to hear from me, because honestly, your questions and me trying to do my best to help you has taught me an incredible amount of information. And then on top of it, given me the confidence to not only, um, give you examples but to use it in my own work and so what was interesting is over the weekend uh yesterday and the day before i guess it was friday and saturday um i decided to treat myself to will weston um lessons will weston is similar to michael hampton but he's an art educator out of art center and uh he did a series of um art talks whatever you want to call it. i don't know what they call it in school when you go to um like seminar i guess uh, in New York City, and um, they're very expensive. One of them was, I think, eighty-five or ninety-five dollars. I did three, so I dropped close to three hundred bucks on um, lessons for myself. And then even last night, I was actually um, I went to Scott Robertson's Gumroad um, and and bought a couple of his Gumroad videos that I'm going to start to work through today while I'm working. But anyway, what was interesting is I went into the Will Weston video really thinking that I I knew stuff but I didn't realize how much I knew. And this is what I tell people about learning is you don't really know how much you know until you put it to the test. When I watched these lessons, honest to God, I knew probably 95% of what he taught. And in fact, not only did I know it like instinctively, I had taught it again and again and again. And it, it I, I told my daughter this, I'm like, I, I was shocked watching the videos and going like, I know this. I, I know that. And it doesn't mean that you can do it flawlessly, but I, I actually picked up some really important things that I had glossed over in my own learning. Again, being self-taught, 
there were holes in my game, gaps that I didn't understand, things that I couldn't connect. And, and drawing really ends up ultimately being like a three or four part process. And um, unfortunately, I had a lot of impatience in the early steps of the drawings. And I could equate that maybe in some degree to being an inker, where essentially what you do is you're given a completed drawing and you get to finish it. Um, it, it could mean just basically tracing it. It could mean embellishing it, meaning that you put sort of prettier lines or, or define things more. And then sometimes, you know, you sort of pick up the slack here and there, and then oh, 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 it, it, there's even a version of it called finishing, where you actually kind of take a pretty loose drawing and finish it. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so honestly, anybody that's going to be moving forward and taking lessons from me, you are going to 1,000% benefit from all that I have learned over this weekend. The Scott Robertson videos are very, very interesting, too. I've got a real good handle on perspective, but in terms of design and doing very complex geometry in perspective, um, the measurement system to put things... Um, in, in space can be challenging, meaning that like if you had to draw a motorcycle in perspective and the, um, or a, a plane and things like that, you know what I mean? There's, there's levels to it. You can understand it, but that dude is like a master of it. And you can, there's, look, Scott Robertson, he's got a YouTube channel. He's got plenty of stuff that he's offered for free. There's a few people that have uploaded some of his very, very old Nomon videos. So you can go out there and for zero budget, um, look at that today. Michael Hampton has um, uh, a YouTube channel with about 30 videos. Those are great. I would highly recommend that. And then there's one student who took a Will Weston seminar probably and he uploaded like about a 40 45 minute video of that um i don't know how good the footage is i didn't watch that but uh you may want to check that out too it's will weston w-i-l-l-w-e-s-t-o-n he used to be on instagram he posted hundreds of images on instagram and pulled the whole thing down so i don't know what happened with that and why he decided to leave instagram but he used to, he was, was really weird as I had discovered him before he went on Instagram, um, maybe a year ago. And then all of a sudden I realized he was on Instagram, um, and he was uploading like a lot of stuff. He did it for like six months and then just like walked away. So he's a little bit of an older guy, so it could be something like that. So anyway, but in one of the Will Whiston seminars, he talked about Paul Felix and his uh, design sense, design skills. He said, this guy was the best not only the best, but like the best of the best. He called him the Mozart of composition and placing objects in the scenes. And I figured, look, if this guy is the Mozart of this, how can I not do this as a super fun Sunday? So, all right, let's celebrate 15,000 subs. I thank you guys so much. I love you all. I love sharing information with you. And most of all, and I said this on my Instagram, which I don't even hardly post on Instagram anymore. As much as I've taught you or that I've exposed you to, it goes both ways. So thank you for helping me learn and be more confident and exposing me to a lot of great stuff. It's like, that's what it's about. All right, let's go. <laughs> Enough of the sappy stuff I said to someone. Or, or let's not be overly sappy. So I, I, I honestly had never seen Paul Felix's stuff. I didn't look ahead last night. Um, I'll, I saved the, the images this morning on Yandex. Um, but... Uh, when Will brought him up, he said that um, Paul worked on one of my favorite Disney movies. I don't watch it a lot anymore, but at the time I loved it, which was he worked on Emperor's New Groove. He also worked on Lilo and Stitch. It looks like he worked on Tarzan. And there was one other movie when I was opening files, and I was like, ah, oh, shit, he worked on this. But, um, you know, you know, beautiful layout here, beautiful sense of value. We've got great perspective, great design. It just all looks very, very cool. You can see him playing with different shapes. You've got triangles, we've got spheres, we've got um, you know box shapes, we've got nice curves. Our eye is really, really focused on this, not only because of the value change, but every, everything's kind of directed. I mean, he's got this pointing here, this is pointing us here. This leads us out of the drawing very nicely. He's got this dip shape and, you know, I've talked about weapons, anything pointy will sort of lead your eye. So this, there may be a few pieces that aren't Paul. I mean, I just did a search, an image search for him. It's funny because this looks a little like the Samurai Jack uh, artist. I can't think of his name. And then also, um, 
I can never remember his name. Something uh, Elvin Deer, El Elvin something. People know who I'm talking about. <laughs> Say it in the comment section. The guy that does these paintings um, is like an old school illustrator, not a not the Samurai Jack guy. Um, he's great though, but I can never remember his damn name. Elvin Elvin Deer. <laughs> Someone's got my back on this, but yeah, it's the shapes of the trees and all this stuff. It's very, very nice, though. Most of this stuff is actually, like, uh, I don't know if this is just graphite or charcoal or whatever it is. This is great. Man, look at this shot right here. It's funny, because if this was a comic book page, I'd be like, it's a little weird having, like, the horses running this direction. Um, but uh, I, these are just uh, storyboards. It's fascinating, too, because as, as much as, you know, you work on construction of figures and anatomy, and then as comic book artists, obviously, we work on um, sequential art and stuff like that. Um, if anyone knows any really, really good, like, storyboard and sequential artists, I would definitely, in the next few months, it would be fun to take a couple of classes on stuff like that. I think, honestly, like, instinctively, that's one of the things that I'm actually sort of naturally have a little bit of a knack for is layout and the storytelling part of it but uh still it never hurts like this is how i looked at the will west and stuff because ultimately i had to like be satisfied with my purchase my belief is and i've said this to people about buying the artist edition books is did i just fuck up and shut a file um i, I might have shut a wrong file um is like like you know the artist edition books are very very expensive it's about 100 and 150 dollars to generally get one of those big books if you learn one thing out of those books, you got your money back because most artists can sell a commission for anywhere from probably 50 to 150 bucks. And obviously as you move along, those prices will inflate, um, hopefully. Um, but uh, you get your money back. So it's like, I look at it as if, if I learn 10 or 15 new things in a day and I drop some cash on it, I'm gonna make that back again and again and again. You know, So invest in yourself sometimes. You know, there's so much free shit online and, and stuff that you can get in other sort of channels, but it's like, I don't mind paying for, for high quality, um, even low quality stuff. If I learned something from it, I used to buy books. I'd go to Aaron brothers and it'd be like how to draw fantasy girls. And overall the books looked interesting, but sometimes not great. But you know, again, I mean, if you pick up a couple of things, it's worth the 18 bucks screw it man you only live once <laughs> i mean i don't always have an extra 18 bucks to blow on a book but i mean if if i do i go for it this is nice it's really interesting this is a, this would be like like obviously for him it's the way that he works but uh would be challenging to always do value value pencil drawings you know uh, everything he does is always shaded not a a always but uh, i hate using those terms like that um i catch it i'll watch the videos back and i'll use these um i don't know what you call it like uh infinite terms he always does this or the look it's all this it's like it's not all this it's, there's a bunch of it this is nice it's funny it almost has a little bit of a face with this like this is a nose and this is like a little mouth i think that could maybe be slightly intentional. I think this is Cusco's house from um, Emperor's New Groove. Or no, Cusco's the bad guy. It's uh, the John Goodman character. This is where Cusco lives. It's been a long time since I've seen that movie, actually. It's funny. Man, that is so cool. I love stuff like this. Great atmosphere. This is very, very cool. Wow. Really, really beautiful shot. Oh, you know, I wanted to ask you guys, too, for anyone that's done crowdfunded or maybe knows a little bit about it, because this was a, I, you know, I talked in the last video about um, little hang-ups that I had and concerns that, that uh, were holding me back on doing a crowdfunded book. The other one was actually, um, so when I launch an Indiegogo, at what point do I have access to that cash? Because if I, if like, say, if, 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 I, if I fire it off, um, can I live off that money for the three or four months that I'm drawing the book? I didn't understand how that worked exactly. I mean, I have a few people that I can ask, but I don't mind, you know, creating the conversation just in a general thing. But, uh, you know what I mean? Like, like, cause I would prefer not to, to work on anything but blaster kid. So if, if the money is there and I can live off of it and pay my bills and elect, you know, electric bill and all that stuff from that money that then blaster kid is 1000% something that I could fire off really, really soon. Um, because I, I had said, I've talked to a few people, um, privately 
uh, last night I was talking to Kier. Thank you, Malware Bites. <laughs> That's going to be the new thing. We're always going to do that. But, uh, yeah, Kier Covington was giving me some uh, help on, on uh, crowdfunding and stuff like that, what he had seen. The thing is, is a lot of fans are really knowledgeable because not only have they been following and watching them, but they've been participating in them. You know, what were, what were your favorite books that you got? You know, what was the quality like? Like, you know, things like that. But, uh, um, you know... It ends up ultimately being a communal sort of process. I was, it was funny because I worry about spoilers too, in terms of like, you know, showing the art and like, you know, how much do you do you say? This is really cool. So it'll be a learning process for me. I kind of I was I was saying last night that uh, it, it's in my mind, you know, you want it to be this amazing, incredible thing, but I also have to just be realistic and say, look, this is a learning process. This is your first one. You know, you, this is, this is the foundation and the year you build up from here. You can't like, you know, the printing isn't going to be <laughs> insanely awesome. You hope that it is, you know, so this is some of the Lilo and Stitch stuff. And then, uh, you know, it's like, can you afford a colorist? Uh, yeah, I'm sure that I will be able to. But I, it, there's a part of me that m I might actually color book myself. We'll see. I really have a, a pretty fulfilled vision in my mind of the, what I want the finished uh, comic to look like. And the colors are really, really important. It's funny because Jay Lee is so lucky because his wife is his colorist and she's incredible and has been coloring his work for a long time. But man, talk about an ace in the hole with that. That is really fortuitous. She's incredible and creates so much atmosphere with her colors. And he's able to, if he wants to pencil and ink pieces, he can do that. If, if he wants to just pencil to color, she knows how to turn the line art into something that, that gives the the look of um you know a finished inked piece so yeah they're an incredible team it's really really cool it's funny you know i haven't asked for career advice from many people but i talked about this on some older videos but a few it was probably two years ago jay lee was one guy that i had always wanted to ask what's it like being the horror guy you're the dark artist in the superhero world what are the challenges that you face with that? Because that's sort of how I had seen myself is I'm a little bit of a square peg in a round hole, which is, you know, my stuff tends to be a little darker. And uh, Jay ended up sitting a row or two behind me in Artist Alley about two years ago. And I was like, man, I'm like, this is your chance, Rich, because I don't know him. I mean, I've, I've, I literally, I think at that point, I'd never even met him or seen him in person. So I grabbed a bunch of my black drawing prints <laughs> and went over and I, I like kind of gave them to him as a gift. I said, I'm a huge fan of your work and like I just wanted to give you these. And, and I think he knew the pieces. I can't remember, but anyway, I was a little nervous. Um, and uh, then I, I we started talking a little bit. I was asking him and, and it was interesting because he did say it was challenging for him. You know, because not every book is geared for the guy that does, you know, Superman, where he looks like he can be from hell or, or things like that. So it was really, really interesting. But I always appreciated that from him, that uh, he was willing to take the time to sort of give me some tips on that. So... It's funny because Wills Portacio is another guy where it's like there's just a little bit of like a dark quality to Wills's stuff. Like everything looks a little haunt haunting. Um, but uh, like I said, that's one of those isms. I talked about isms in your work, like underlying underlining un underlying qualities that your work naturally has. Um, and uh, that was one thing I've always felt Wills and I had in common was that we both have like there's like a little bit of a angular feel to our stuff. And it's a little dark. I don't really draw anything like Wills, though, just to be clear. Meaning that, I mean, he's... Wills is, you know, a legend. I'm just a peon. <laughs> but uh, I could see some some natural similarities in some of the stuff that we do. And and I, he was, like, one of those guys when you first saw Wetworks. You were like, oh, my God, like, who is this guy? 
This is really a beautiful gesture. It's funny, it almost looks like he's wearing pants. Cause the different, the color shift, and then also this little like line right here. Sorry, this video is a little rambly. I don't know anything about Paul Felix, so it's it's. I almost feel like I sh I don't like I'll title it Paul Felix, but I do apologize to Paul Felix fans because there's he's it would be like not knowing anything about Jack Kirby probably to animators they're gonna watch this and go who is this guy he's a fucking idiot sorry try not to curse in some of these videos because I don't know the artists and I don't want to be offensive to their fan base I take it back. This is really cool. So on Lilo and Stitch, he worked with Chris Sanders, who was more of, from my point of view, I think would be considered more of the character designer. Chris is really good. Somewhere I actually have an art book or sketchbook that I bought off of him at Comic-Con years ago. The guy's amazing. Sandra Hope turned me on to him. She loved Chris Sanders' work. And uh, what was funny is I've talked about this in old videos. So Sandra Hope and I were, were two of the more hardcore Wildstormers. Ryan saw one of my videos or saw part of it. And he was like, man, I was there all the time. <laughs> oh, I think it was, oh, I did a I did a talk for uh, the Comic Artist Boot Camp. And I said, I said something about, I, I think it was in reference to Sandra and I, but Sandra and I would always work on the weekends. So at Wildstorm on the weekends, it would literally be just her and I, and I would get there uh, usually a little tiny bit earlier than her, but she would stay later than me. But I would get in around 10 in the morning and I would work till probably like five. And I think she would generally stay a little bit longer, but we would watch Disney movies on the weekends and, and then ink, <laughs> but Lilo, Lilo and Stitch. Oh, and Iron Giant, too. Oh, that's not Disney, right? I think it's Fox. Is it? I don't know what it is. But we, Iron Giant, Lilo and Stitch, Emperor's New Groove. I had so many Disney movies there. Lion King. Who knew Dark Dark Rich was such a, a, a Disney fan? <laughs> Artists are good, man. How can you not like this shit? Oh, this is so cool. God, I, there was a girl's art that I found online the other day. I think I think it was on ArtStation. I was looking for just... I don't go to ArtStation very often, but when I do, um, you know, it's it's a bit of a grab bag of what, what I'll um, check out. Um, but she had done these, like, 3D models that were in gray. I don't know if it was, like, a, I can't remember... What, what they call that but um, oh my god she was do she did these like cartoony like living rooms but like in ZBrush and they were just in grayscale still oh they were so good I was like man I would love to be able to draw with that much value <laughs> but this is this is leaning towards that but it's you know pencil graphite but uh yeah, if there was a way to get some of those smooth, smooth looks with, like, an ink line. I, you know what's funny, too, is, so this is an interesting thing, is, is since I was a kid, I was fascinated with that look. I mean, way, way before I ever got into comics, talking at least 10 years before I even was looking at comics. And that was a challenge that I had as a kid, is I would see a beautiful, like, black and white photograph of something, and, and then when I would draw, I would get frustrated because I would go, I can't get it to look that smooth with pen and ink, you know, like a ballpoint pen or whatever I was would try to like draw the dark lines with just wouldn't get that like, you know, it was always a hatch of some sort. It was always a line. It was never that smooth blend. But I was determined and stubborn. And for years, whenever I would gravitate back to drawing, uh, I would always try to achieve that look with with a pen. It was really like a weird thing, like a mental uh, thing that I had. I have no idea why. <laughs> Cut to being a professional comic book artist, and here we are, years later, same shit. <laughs> isms, right? That's an ism. <laughs> I've got isms. <laughs> this is really cool. Oh, man, it's funny because I know people want me to do this artist. I can't think of his name off the top of my head. I mentioned it in a video a few days ago. Um, the artist that does Blam, Blame, Blam, it's pronounced Blam, um, and uh, Abra. Uh, 
I love his stuff, but but uh, he does those real tall, thin staircases like that. The first time I saw that was in the Giger ne Necronomicon book. He has some pen and ink drawings that he did with those types of really creepy uh, high staircases that are super like that you would never be able to really go up and down them, or they're ladders, ladders and things like that. But uh, really, really cool shit. I will do it. I just haven't had time. So, what is his name? I have the book right here. I'll, I want to say the name. Just people are yelling at the screen right now. Say it, Rich. What is his name? His name is Tetsumo Nihai. Nihei. He's awesome. It's T S U T O M U and then N I H E I. I have three of the Blam phone books, and then I have the Abra hardcover. And I like it enough that it's actually in my short list of books. I have about 25 or 35 books under my desk that's like the secret stash. It's like the good shit. All four of those books are in the secret stash. <laughs> my Nick Manabat book is in the secret stash too. I love Nick's stuff. All right. So this is a pretty schizophrenic video in terms of uh, learning from Paul Felix. I apologize. <laughs> All right, so we're done. That's Super Fun Sunday. You're like, what, Rich? This it doesn't feel complete. I agree. It hey, doesn't, right? What is that? All right, I'm back. Let me see something. Else. Yeah, the video felt like it was going to be too short. So I was like, you know what? Come up with another plot, another scheme, Rich. What else can you show people? So um, one of the recommendations that Will Weston gave in my um, one of the videos that I watched was he... Uh, plugged this animation screen cap site and I had seen it a year or two ago I think or something very very similar to that but this is an incredible resource for not only study material but I mean obviously could use it for reference um, I literally just kind of randomly I think I went into the movie series last night um, and just clicked on something I wasn't even a movie I had seen and it was crazy what they've got here so let's just take a look at this really fast the, the, like i said the video was feeling like it was going to end a little short and uh it's not super focused so it's more of a casual chat than anything else moana is great let's actually look at this really quick so i mean the this the amount of screen caps that these people took is uh, almost uh disturbing <laughs> i i couldn't believe that someone was this like this is nuts. So these are 4K screen caps in 2160p resolution. Um, and, uh, it, it, like, look at this. Do we, like, like, do animators really need to see this many screen caps? I guess they do, but, um, you know, th their hard work is appreciated. But uh, let's, let's just kind of scoot through here and check this out. I'll click on some of them, obviously. Just let me find something that's interesting. But, like, this is nuts. But, you know... Will was talking about like how picky they were about value. He he, although he is an instructor now mainly, he did actually work at Disney as an animator, and his structure would be more along the lines of again Michael Hampton. If you're familiar with the Michael Hampton books, and it, it, Hampton could be a student of Will's, or or that they're from the same thing, um, and uh, you know it's based on sort of like Loomis type structures. Character is so freaking awesome. I love this movie. It gets a little blurry. Um, but, uh, you know, screen caps are like that because things are moving and, you know, to capture it. But, uh, you know, what, what he was recommending is he said, like, for people that need to work on, like, faces, okay. Oh, that's interesting. So, yeah, I guess that's the, the deal with a, a screen cap is that some of them are going to be like that. Uh, all right. That could just be that my RAM is taxed. Let me see this when you're screen recording it sort of it tugs on your computer's uh thing. oh that's so awesome um but yeah he said you know like like i think one of the assignments that he gives his students is to draw like 300 heads from screen crap screen, screen caps like facial expressions so things like this because there's a lot of subtleties that will happen from this expression until the ultimate expression that he actually gets to um, in this sequence, although that's a pretty big skip, but, uh, you can actually go frame by frame. And even if you're not drawing from them, it's, it's, I, I've explained this to people that are trying to learn clothing. If you don't understand folds and stuff like that, 
beyond learning what the how, why folds happen and how fabrics respond to folds, there's something very very valuable about like having someone's arm relaxed and then watching frame by frame as they move their arm up, say in a position like this guy has now, where the folds happen, how they start to happen, how they work with each other and things like that. And it can really actually um, help you um, bridge the gap between sort of the, um, you know, the concept and the reality of what goes on or fictional reality as we're artists. <laughs> oh, goodness. So here, oh, God. Yeah, I, I love this movie. <laughs> I really do. It's so good. Look at the colors. And then, you know, this is another interesting thing for people that are interested in doing comic books. Um, I think I showed an example of this maybe on Patreon or it might have been briefly in a YouTube video. You can actually um, spot what movies are what. You know, like, like, like I could show you um, co color swatches from Lion King, and based on the color palette, you could probably tell me that the color palette that I'm showing you is from Lion King. It's super, super crazy how um, keyed in we are to that. And so when they tell a story, they're also telling it in color, meaning that you could you could pull out any kind of images. You could blur these, take like the median tool, and turn this just into like swatches of color. And the color really would create moods too, you know? The greens are more calm, the ambers are warm, there's maybe a feeling of family or, or connection and stuff like that. Um, you know, and then as you move through it, you're gonna see a different dynamic as hotter colors come in and stuff like that. I mean, in, any great colorist um, has probably a far deeper knowledge base of it than I do, but I understand some of the basic principles of it. It's beautiful. Uh, let's see. So many screen caps of the little kid. Oh, <laughs> that's my shit. Beautiful water. Uh oh. Watch out, little girl. You're gonna get smacked by a wave. It's gonna knock you down. All right. Oh, does it hit her? Oh, she's okay. Oh, look at that. That's like the thing. It talks to her or something, right? What does it do? It's been a while since I've seen this. Normally, I'm on drugs when I watch it. No, I'm just kidding. Usually I'm working. Any any time I'm if I'm watching a movie nine times out of ten I'm working, so I miss a lot. I did you know what though the last time that I watched this actually was like on Thanksgiving or Christmas. I decided I was gonna take the morning off before we went to like family and I watched the whole thing killing an hour or two. It was so good. What do we got? Yeah, the colors are great, the skin and stuff like that, too. All right, let's go and check out another movie really quick. Oh. So, uh, Spider-Verse, wow. So this would be great if someone needed to work on perspective and picking, like, shots. Although you could do this on your own. Can you see the vanishing points? Can you find them in your mind? What perspective is this? Do you know? You should. And if you don't, come over to Patreon. I'll teach you the ways, young Jedi. It's taking a while to load. It, again, I don't think it's the, the site as much as my computer and the OBS fighting. Awesome movie is so freaking good. Oh, man. I love that. Let's see. This looks pretty cool. Man, that's awesome. The color in this movie is beautiful, too. Again, the, the goal with something like this would be you could really learn how to, like, uh, well, I mean, you could break it any break it down any way you want. You could work on perspective. You could work on heads, facial expressions, the whole nine yards. I mean, this is a wealth of information done for you, you know, because if you are actually pulling screenshots for yourself out of these movies as some sort of study tool, um, it would be very time-consuming, you know. You'd spend five hours just saving all this shit, and then hopefully you would draw from it. This could expedite it, where you could just come on here, you know, 15, 20 minutes a day in the morning and go, oh, like, you know what, I'll run through these headshots really quick. I'm just going to do 30-second sketches of, of all these little things that she does with her face. It seems like the third one never loads. Let's see if it happens again. No, it did load. Man, there's subtle difference. Oh, there you go.
Wow, it really is subtle. It's cool how you can see a little tiny bit of her teeth and even uh, just a suggestion of the bottom teeth. Little cues like that, you know, that'll stay with you. And you'll go, oh, yeah, if I need to do sort of like the she's thinking or trying to decide type drawing, you'll go, oh, maybe a little teeth will look good. You know, you'll have a, a point of view of uh, when you, that might come in useful. It's helpful shit. For show. Sure. All right, I'm going to wrap it up because now I have to process this video because I had to edit it. But I wanted to show you guys this site. And, I mean, there are so many movies. Non-Disney. Let's see really quick. Ooh, Willy Wonka. Pets. Oh, Peter Rabbit. Smallfoot. Again, I think that this mostly um, is leaning towards animated. Or I saw that they have Pirates of the Caribbean, one of the Pirates of the Caribbean. Song of the Sea. I think I remember the name of that. What is this? Oh. Nice colors. What else they got? Let me see. 4K galleries. Oh, okay. So those are different. I get it. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Well, I was like, oh, you know what's a good one? I wonder if they have it. Can you search? You can't search. Let's see. Corpse Bride. Yeah, they have it. I love the color of this. All this opening stuff is so cool with the, the muted grays. See, we have fun on our YouTube, on this YouTube channel. It is our YouTube channel. I was going to correct myself and say mine, but it really is ours. Christopher Lee, rest in peace, dude. You rocked. This is a nice shot right here. Oh, it's the same one. Or oh, I guess they took a lot of screen caps of that. But the design of these characters is great, too. They're all such different shapes. Um, it's funny, too. You know, I, it, I think when I watch the movie, but it, it, it's uh, the opening is a little tiny bit like uh, Forrest Gump. Just different. Because doesn't Forrest Gump start with, like, you're following, like, a butterfly or something, like, flying through the air? This is a cool little sequence. The guy cutting the fish. Look at the, look at the shape of his body. It's hysterical. And then this guy has got a different thing going on. Let's see. The maquettes, or whatever they call these puppets, are so badass. Let's see, what's this shot? It looks cool. Look at that. That's so cool. All right, have fun with this. <laughs> the legs on the horse are hysterical. Those little thin, spindly legs. It's so cool. It's totally got, like, the Rankin Bass sort of vibe to it, which, I mean, Burton obviously was a big fan of that stuff. Oh, these characters are so weird looking. The horse. Mm -hmm. And then this movie really changes color. Wow, you can download the gallery as a zip file? Get out of town. I'm surprised that, uh, like, yeah, I hate to even say it, but I'm surprised that a company like Disney doesn't shut this down. I guess it benefits them as they get a fish through the talent of people that would actually use this for something worthwhile. This lady's such a weird shape. Look at that. That's crazy. But yeah, I guess you can download these. That's the, it's like, not only is this site a huge score, but dude, that's crazy. Kiss your um, uh, hard drive goodbye. <laughs> It's like, I'm going to need another 10 external hard drives. <laughs> OCD, don't fail me now. All right, have a great day. Thank you so much for 15,000 subs. I got to edit this video, and uh, I'll be back tomorrow. And I am actually going to start live streaming. Give me like a week or two to get get ready for that. Um, like I said, my goal has been the 21st. I was going to start making announcements. They're starting to spill out now, but you know, again, I need to get feedback from you on what tier options you guys want, what sort of like merch you want, what, you know, the whole nine yards. So anyway, but the goal was in the 21st, I was going to present all that and um, get the feedback, but we can start spilling into it now. It's fine. All right. Talk to you guys later.